I recently turned 40. Now I know what you're saying, you don't look 40. Ah, thanks. I know, I look way younger than that, but I did, yes. And so today we're gonna to look at how turning 40 has challenged my leadership. Yes, we're taking a look at everyday events and see how we can learn to become better leaders by little things that have happened to me. And one thing that did happen to me is turning 40. Now, I know that some of you are probably a lot, lot younger than, than that and probably think, 40, that's ages away. I don't need to know anything about 40. So I suppose today's video is actually more about a message to my 20-year-old self right? Trying to put a message to my 20-year-old 20, 20 self of all the things that I've learned now having turned 40 about leadership and how it could benefit me as a 20-year-old. And I hope that your 20-year-old self, however recent or long ago that was, can benefit from this too. So let's get into it. Now let's 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 look at the bad points, right? Because you know this forty. Oh, now you're forty. Now you're over the hill. Forty is so old. You know, yes, I know. Forty is this big landmark. That's like, oh, now you're over the hill. Forty, you're old now. Forty, it's it's all over for you. You 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 you've lost your youth now. Well. I suppose today is a little bit of an encouragement for any of those that are close to 40 or over 40, but also a bit of a lesson for those that are younger of things you can do preparing by the time you reach my age, and hopefully you can be in a better position too. You know what, at the end of the day, I suppose the message that I want you to take away from today is just don't rush. Don't rush, right? The life is not a sprint. Although, although Paul does talk about, I'm, I'm running the race to the, that has been set out before me and I'm running, I'm running hard to win, but it's a long race, right? So we need to pace ourselves. I was very guilty of that when I was younger. I thought it was a sprint. I had to get that success early. I had to achieve everything by the time I was 20, by the time I was 25, by the time I'm 30, by the time I'm 35, by the time I'm 40. And uh, so there's, there's been a few things that I've learned about turning 40, but I want to kind of position it in, in so you understand what, what the expectations are. Because, you know, life expectancies are around about between 70, around 75 for males, 74.5 for males and, and 80 point something for women, you know. And yes, that means that I'm halfway through my life. But you know, there's people living right now that are almost 120 years old. And that kind of gets me onto our first point is that 40 is actually younger than you think. 40 is way younger than you think because there's so much more life ahead of you. Like I said, there's people that are now recorded alive that are almost 120 years old. And remember in Genesis, after after God had you know wiped the planet of evil man and everything like that with the flood, afterwards he said, "Look, I, I believe you guys are living a little bit too long. You're gathering a little bit too much wickedness over your years. So I'm going to limit you to 120 years." And there's actually something that I take from that. Well, actually, something that one of my mentors, Dr. Rod Saint Hill, who you've seen on our podcast. It was one of his mantras that he used to always say that I've kind of taken to heart and I'm believing for it too is, well, if God said we can live to 120, we can live to 120. So now that I'm 40, I'm only like one third the way through my life, right? I'm like I've only, I'm only one third the way through. And so I want to encourage you that, well, it's biblical. You can live up to 120 Obviously, there's so many variables that are, that are in play there. But I just want to encourage you that, that 40 is younger than you think. You're only just getting started, right? Now, let me put this in business terms, right? Because that's biblical. Let me put this in business terms. There have actually been quite a number of people that have been successful in their 40s. Because like, I think one of the challenges we face with social media right now is, you know, there's this trend that, that we kind of, yeah, I suppose bombarded or drowned with that has forced down our throats that that with now nowadays with technology, there's all these young tech startup successful people and 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 you know, because you've got people like Mark Zuckerberg out in his 20s, he he formed Facebook and now he's all this multi-billionaire and, and everything like that. And we're kind of influenced with all these young success stories. And these young success stories put pressure on us when we're younger. 
Look, I know it's now, but even when I was 20, there was a lot of pressure on me to try to, you know, by your 20s, you got to be a millionaire. By, the, by your 25, you got to be a millionaire. By the time you're 30, you got to be a millionaire. There's all this pressure on us. But let me, let me give you the reality of it. But did you know an MIT professor did research and found that the average age of most business founders is 40. When people first start their business, the average is about 40. And that was about 15 years ago. And recent studies say the average has actually moved more towards 45. So we're actually actually getting more and more and more further on in our maturity, let's say, before we're actually starting to found businesses now. And so be encouraged that you don't have to start it really early. Actually, another stat that's actually really awesome is that, did you know that a founder of a business that is 50 years old is twice as likely to have a successful exit. That means they either get bored out or they, or they do an IPO or whatever. If you're 50 or over, you're twice more likely to be successful. You know, that's, not, that's in business. There's a whole bunch of examples of people that have in their 40s or further. You know, I came across this article in Business Insider that, that was highlighting all these people that had actually been successful not after they were 40, right, whether they're 40 or on. And I want to share a couple of those to, to encourage you. Stan Lee, you know, the Marvel series guy, he created his first successful comic book at 39, right? And then you've got Donald Fisher, who, who was 40 years old when he first founded The Gap. You know the retail store? Have you heard of it? He had zero retail experience and he was 40 years old before he founded the first Gap store. And then obviously it's now one of the largest, uh, one of the largest fashion stores in the world. So that's some business. What about what about some actors? Maybe maybe you aspire to be be an influencer or be famous on on the on the movie screen. Well, Samuel L. Jackson was 43 before he got his first starring role. And what about funny man Steve Carell? Yes, if you're a, an Office fan like I am, you would have known him from the start. But it wasn't until he was 42 that he actually had that role. And then, you know, the typical story, I can't leave Ray Kroc from McDonald's aside. He was 52 before he bought into the McDonald's brand and then obviously made the success that we know, which is the largest fast food franchise in the world. But maybe you're a media person and you're like, that stardom stuff isn't for me. I just, I want, I want to make an impact in media. Well, what about Ariana Huffington? You know, probably heard of the name Huffington Post. She founded that at age 55 and now is one of the most influential publication outlets. Well, maybe maybe you're someone that more looks at, well, you know what, what about all the crypto guys? Like there's so much crypto wealth now and they're all young now. They're all the people that are making it rich in crypto or are really young now. Despite what's happening in crypto right now, Let's look at Jason Lubin. If you're in the crypto world, you know him. He was one of the founders of Ethereum, one of the largest cryptocurrencies. He founded that at age 50. So I, I, I give these examples to you to understand that when, to my 20 year old self, you don't have a small window of when you can be successful. You can actually be successful much later in life. All those people that are 40 like me or approaching it or beyond it, You've got so much more opportunity. There's so much more opportunity for you to reach that success, reach that purpose that God has actually called you to. Because you know what? I honestly feel like I have not even started. Yes, after 40 years, I honestly feel like I haven't even started yet. There is so much more ahead of me, so much more potential that I have to work towards rather than looking back on what haven't I achieved so far. So we spoke about all these success stories of people that are, let's say, in their later or a little more mature years, 40 plus, right? Why do you think it is that they are more successful beyond 40, right? I believe it comes down to three main things. The first of which is experience. That's right. Over the years, you get to gather so much experience in life that when you reach my age, I kind of feel like I'm an old person saying that. I'm not old. I'm still young, I promise. But when you reach my age, like I've gathered so much experience over my years that now when I go to do something, I'm banking on 
all of that experience, that wealth of knowledge that I've gained over the years. And so my encouragement to you is be looking for those experiences. When you're young, talking to my 20-year-old self, you're young. Say yes to every opportunity that you've got in front of you. Gather as many different random experiences as you can. Gather it all up. Don't think that you need to try to rush that success because right now, it's about gathering experience. Now, I bank on all of my experience. You know, look, look, when it comes to experience, there's probably two different paths you can take. And I don't actually believe either are better than the other. I believe that both are just as powerful, but it just depends on what's right for you. The first path is, like, there's a few people that I've worked with in the past that they have just done one thing and they've done their whole career that way, or they've spent the last you know, 10, 15, 20 years just doing the one thing, doing it the same way, and they've actually achieved quite massive success because they've just stayed in their lane. The advantage of that is you just, you just stick with what you know, right? You just build on what you're doing and just build and build and build. You build experience, you build your reputation, you, re, you build connections and networks all in this one thing. So you can become like a real expert in this one area. And I know a, a number of people that have just found a lane and they're just stuck with it. And they are really successful because they've just built on this one thing and just stayed focused on that. And so there is real advantage to that. If you feel like, yeah, you know what? I want to double down and I want to focus on one path and build on that. That is one way to build your experience. The other way, which is actually the way that I've found myself doing it and the way that I prefer it, but I don't encourage it, is I've actually, I've always said yes to opportunities. Always. When anyone said, hey, do you want to come and do this? Yes. Do do you want to do this job? Yes. Do you want to, do you want to come travel here with me? Do you want to do that? Like whenever there's been an opportunity, I've just said yes, because what I've done is I've actually gathered a toolbox of, of a variety of experiences that have really helped me. And this is actually what, and here's the warning of that. The disadvantage of doing it that way is over time, I notice I've restarted my life. I can look back on my life and I've probably, you know, kind of started from, you know, zero my life, probably four to five different times, right? Where I've just got kind of started a new city and a new country, started with nothing, started a new business, started a new career, started, you know, starting something new because I just followed an opportunity and went, you know what? I'm going to chase, I'm going to follow this experience and this opportunity. And so the challenge with that is you're just constantly forever starting anew. So you can build up your your networks and experience and everything like that. And then you start new and you're almost starting from zero again. So that, that is the challenge and the disadvantage of that. The advantage of it though, is that I am actually way more experienced in a variety of things than the person who's just stayed, who I've worked with in the past. They're just in one lane. Now, Yes, they may have more success now, but I actually truly believe that because of my varied experience, I have a greater platform now that I say that I feel like I've only just started, that I'm now working on those things and building on that platform of that variety of experience. I've built a lot of networks and a lot of connections broad. And so now I've built broad, I can now build up. But it is a risk. But I've really enjoyed it. And I'm that sort of person. I'm like, I, I like to follow experiences. And even if at my end of my life, I'm still kind of at the same, let's say, success level as I am now because I'm pursuing another thing, I've, I've enjoyed my life. I've had great experiences and I'm really grateful for them. And I wouldn't change it for the world. But my warning to anyone who thinks, oh, yeah, I'll do that. Just be careful that you're not jumping from thing to thing because things get too hard and you haven't pushed through. Just be careful that you're not just doing shiny ball syndrome and just chasing random experiences because I have seen people that have just stuck on one path be super, super successful. But I've also seen that I've been able to add so much more value to those people because I have varied experiences. For example, in my life, I'm a qualified teacher. And so my experience as an educator or that education degree actually really helps me as a coach and putting together programs. I've produced shows for MTV. That's a random experience, but 
understanding production, I now know how to produce online content and it's made me better with, with social media. I've, I've run a church and so being able to run a church actually really challenged my leadership and I'll talk about that in another video and help me become a better leader and, and help me be able to connect with people better and help me be able to find myself. And so I've, had, I've been, been able to build on all these experiences that now I can connect with you in a much better way, in a deeper way, right? And so, so there is an advantage to going broad, but understand that there is a risk. You can just bounce from thing to thing. So one of the key reasons why I believe people over 40 are more successful is because they've gathered experience. So don't try to rush, but focus on gaining your experience, whether it's in one path or whether it's a variety of experiences. The second reason why I think that people that are 40 and beyond are more successful is because we learn to become more patient. I think over years, when you're young, everything's a rush, everything's a sprint. And as you get older, you start realizing that time is less important while you start having less of it. And I know that's controversial because everyone's like, time is your greatest resource and don't waste it away because it's the only thing you can get back, you can't get back. But I actually truly believe that time becomes less important to you over time because you actually realize how much more you have of it. Because when you're young, you're trying to race. I've got to get, I've got to get successful by 20, by 25, by 21, like whatever. Like you're trying to like, I've got to be Insta famous next month or next year, right? But the more you go on in life, the more you realize, actually, you know what? I've got time. And I've realized that even because I didn't make it successful in that time frame, my life is still good. I'm still happy. I'm still loving my life. I'm still getting amazing experiences and I'm still having success in different areas. And so over time, you start to get a little bit more patient. You get a little bit more understanding. You, you get a little bit more, more ready to, to be prepared to wait because you know, you know what, it hasn't happened up until now. It doesn't matter if it takes another 10, 20 years. Because that's what I say to myself. Even let, I know that I started this off by saying I live to 120. But let's say I live to 80, right? If I live to 80, I've built on for the last 40 years, or let's say 20 years of career, I've built on that. Why do I have to be successful in the next five years? Why do I need to be successful in the next 10 years? You know, what if it takes me 20 years? If it takes me another 20 years to be, be you know, quote unquote, even more successful, I'll still be 60 and I'll still have 20 years to be able to enjoy and build on that success, right? And so, so I want you to understand 20 year old self, be patient. You have more time than you thought and it doesn't have to happen overnight. And the third reason why I believe that people when they're 40 or, or near that age become more successful is because we have clarity on our purpose. When you, if you spoke to my 20 year old self, which I'm trying to talk to now and ask him what his purpose was, it'd be completely different to what it is now. Because back then it, the purpose was success, was wealth, was, was fast cars. Now it's impact. Now it's understanding what my calling is to educate and train and raise up the next generation of leaders, the, the mission to eradicate poor leadership. And now that I have more clarity on that purpose, I look back and I go, I kind of was still chasing that back then, but it's become more refined. And now I understand it more. Now I know how to actually deliver it. And so it's kind of like, like that sloth meme, you know, one that just takes time to get things done done. You know what? Over time, because you have taken time, you have more clarity on your purpose. So I, I would speak to my younger self and say, focus more rather than trying to chase the success. Understand your purpose. Understand your purpose so that you know what to focus on so you can build on that and pursue that and know that with your purpose, you understand it's such a big impact. It's such a big vision that you know it's going to take you years, decades to achieve, not just a couple of months. 
And so the three reasons why I believe that people 40 and beyond are more successful is because they gather more experiences. They are more patient and understand that they have more time than they think, and they have gotten more clarity on their purpose. Now, I want to end this with just a little bit of a fun anecdote of the one thing that is really how turning 40 has really challenged my leadership is that I'm actually older than I am. You know, and, and I know that I, I know I started out by saying I'm younger than, you know, 40 years old, younger than you think it is, but I'm actually older than 40. And what I mean is my body, you know, you start to feel it when I was 30, you start to find it's harder a little bit to lose weight. When you reach 40, it's all these aches and pains are, and now it's harder to get out of bed and playing with my son to pull myself up off the floor. Actually, it's really funny. Whenever my son says, up daddy, up daddy, I get to hop up and you know what he does? Because that's the noise that I make every time I get up off the floor because my body's breaking down. I'm old, right? And so this is a message to my younger self, my 20-year-old self. Please take care of your body. Please, please take care of your health. And while, yes, I was when I was younger, I've always been healthy, always looked after what I what I've eaten, always, always exercised and everything like that. But I actually pushed my body a little bit more than I should have. With sports, I went a little crazier and I got some crazy, so a lot of, lot more injuries and that I'm suffering from now. I've I've gotten your know, injuries over time that I haven't taken care of because I was young. I was like, oh, it doesn't matter, I'm young, I can I can push through it. But now that I'm 40, they're all starting to catch up to me. So the one bit of advice I can give you as as a as my younger self is. 40 is older than you think, so you need to take care of your health. Please, please take care of your health so that, and and any injuries, all those little injuries, all those niggling things, go and get them, like, don't don't ignore them. Get sleep, get, do, do all that, eat healthy. And I, I, I honestly, I can't end this. Obviously, I wanted, you know, this is a little bit of a personal thing, but to my younger self, and I hope that you learn from this too, is... I experimented with drugs when I was younger and I got caught up in that party scene and I am actually suffering from the side effects of that now. I know my brain is slower. I know I'm slower since having taken drugs. I've got gut issues and I know that that was from, you know, the experiment, experimenting with drugs. And so uh, they didn't want didn't want this to be a, a, a an overly serious, but I mean, I, I can't end it without saying that, that, that those, those decisions you make when you're younger do affect you when you turn 40. And so that is how turning 40 has challenged my leadership. So let me encourage you, focus on your purpose, pursue your purpose, don't rush it. It takes time. You've got more time than you think. And you can have more success later on by gathering experiences, being patient, and having clarity on your purpose. See you in the next video.